Hey everybody, welcome to the Blue Collar Beer Gentlemen. I'm Chris, I started this channel because I'm a fan of craft beer, but I'm on kind of a limited budget, and I wanted to demonstrate that it's possible to enjoy good quality yales without having to break the bank. So the beers that I review on this channel usually come in around the $2 price range, and such is the case with today's selection. I actually paid $2.29 for this 12-ounce can of Bell's Best Brown Ale. <coughs> there it is right there. This beer is three months old. Uh, has a 5.8 ABV. Typically brown ales come in between 4.3 and 6.2, so it's actually a little at the higher end. Uh, has 34 IBUs. Typically American brown ales come in between 20 and 30, so it's actually a little high on the uh, bitterness scale. Um, the brewery says it should contain caramel and cocoa notes, according to uh, caramel and cocoa notes. Uh, let's see if there's any more description on here, because I know that this is says it has a shelf, shelf life of six months. As I said, this is three months old. Yeah, three months old, so I'm well within range. Smooth, toasty brown ale brewed with American hops, best enjoyed with the changing of the seasons. If you go to their site, um, Bells does say that, that uh, this is pretty much one of their standards for the winter. Not pretty much. It is one of their standards for the winter. And brown ales do sort of lend themselves to uh, the cooler months because they are uh, more malt-heavy than, say, hops. Um, there's sort of a roastiness. They're, they're just kind of associated with the cooler months, and uh, we don't really get, we, we kind of get cooler months here in, in Las Vegas. So uh, during these cooler months, I've been making the most of these brown ales. As I, as I promised, January would have a lot of brown ales, porters, and stouts, and here is another brown ale. So I believe, actually, though, that that is, if it's not the last brown ale, then it's one of the last brown ales of... Uh, uh, no, 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 it's not the last brown ale of the month. I apologize for sounding schizophrenic. Anyway, um, quick notes about the reviewing community. 46 of my friends on Untapped have given this, uh, <clears throat> have given it a cumulative score of 3.75. 102,000 of us have given it a cumulative score of 3.69. Beer Advocate has 3,241 rankings. Um, giving it a cumulative score of 86 on their scale, that's very good. And they have an average score of 3.85. Uh, one quick note about brown ales on top of the fact that I've, I've really been getting a lot into them and I enjoy drinking them during the winter months. Um, Pete's Wicked Ale is oftentimes uh, considered the first commercially successful uh, standard of American brown ales. So there you have that. I am going to be using my um, Porter Stout glass. If you note, the glass comes in slightly on these sides. Also has a rounded bottom, as opposed to those flat bottoms that come down uh, on Boston shakers. And has a slightly tulipy mouth, which I guess Boston shakers don't have. Anyway, the Boston shaker glass, the glass that you normally get poured beer in at a brewery, is fine for the breweries, but you're not supposed to use it at home. You're supposed to use variations like this. So there you have it. Alright. Not too crazy foam. That's a good thing. You know what I forgot to do is I forgot to do my own stats on Bells. Because I know they'd be very high. I've, I've reviewed in a great number of Bells beers, and I always give them high marks. So I know that if I, if I had done my homework properly, I would have seen, uh, I would have, I'd be able to tell you what my uh, standards are with this brewery. I am going to tell you right now that what you are seeing right there, gang, is actually a little bit darker than, uh, than the beer itself. This actually has the color of, I'd say, um, oh, iced tea. I'd say this has the color of iced tea. It's, uh, it's not as dark as I was expecting. I can actually see my hand when I move it behind the glass like that. Now I am looking at this head, and that head is uh, very substantial. And while I do see bubbles popping, they're not popping overly fast, so I wouldn't be surprised if, if by the time I had a few sips of this, it was still going strong. I'm going to describe this as medium-high carbonation. It's very difficult to see because the bubbles are so small and because the beer is kind of dark, but there actually is a lot of carbonation popping up from the bottom of this glass. So I'm going to give this a quick beard wipe, see what I come across. Chocolatey, roasty, caramely, malt. 
I'll just stick my schnoz in directly see what more I can have the counter. Just got a stronger whiff of the same bouquet. Uh, chocolate and, and uh, to toffee. I'm getting, I'm getting toffee notes for sure. Lots of malt, but that's to be expected with the brown ale. Brown ales are full of malt. Alright. Well, I think I should quit yapping my flap and do some drinking. Cheers. Mm. I'll describe that as a medium low mouthfeel. Not a whole lot of spikiness to it, but very, very creamy. Um, very roasty. It just feels nice and tempered. Um, as I said, it does have a slightly higher IBU count. Uh, than uh, than expected. Now, now Bell's is uh, the brewery. As I said, they um, they don't like to put their IBUs. They they believe that IBUs is more a matter of uh, something you'd use for home brewing as as to uh, as opposed to say commercial brewing. But as I said before, and I, I am doing my homework. I'm trying to find out you know what everybody's opinions are. And get an idea, and we will do a video before very long. I am working on it, I promise you. Sometime in 2020, uh, there will be a video in which we discuss IBUs and whether they're a uh, practical uh, count or not. Anyway, as I said, if you, uh, as, as I've said before in, in previous videos, if you go to Bell's and you click on the thing that says, why don't we give IBUs, it'll explain to you why, but it will also give you the IBU count for the beer. And so with 34, this is a higher IBU, but it's really, really tempered. And it's creamy, and it's got a nice, it's not overly roasty. Now, I, I will say this, it's not its not the roastiest um, brown ale I've had. And by virtue of the fact that it's a little bit lighter in color, I'm not surprised. It means that uh, the malt was roasted, but not, not super roasted. So, um, all in all, i got to say, this is a pretty damn good beer. I would... Uh, Trying to decide whether I want to give it a 4.0 or a 4.25. I think I want to give it a 4.25, which means that because it comes in a can, uh, those of you who watch this channel regularly know that I give canned beers an extra 0.25, so I'm going to give this beer right here, Bell's Best Brown Ale, a winter standard for them, a 4.5. And uh, I'd say for 229, it's it's worth the money. It's uh, definitely definitely. Uh, a good beer for, you know, like two and a half dollars considering tax. So, anyway, good beer, high marks, uh, always pleased with Bell's beers. So, uh, anyway, there you have it. Well, guys, if you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, drink good beer and don't break the bank doing it. Cheers.